So we are going to create the plans under each coverage type. This we discussed, and yep. today we'll talk about retirement savings, and we'll go we'll go all these coverage one after another day, and then after additional tasks we have like business processes, EIB, and also uh, how to configure enrollment event rules, cross plan dependence, open enrollment. Once we configured, we'll work on that area. Sir. Okay, right. So today we're going to cover retirement savings. Uh, we'll take that uh, 401k only. So requirement is straightforward and simple. Let's say we are creating a 401k benefit plan, a percentage based plan. Okay. Now we'll call the name as uh, provider company trust or let's say company one trust. And then uh, coverage type will be. So we have we should be familiar with the order of configuration and terminology. The so coverage type, let's call it as AMD 401k. And benefit uh, group, we will use our own. We'll create a benefit event type. So this will create sir quickly. Yeah. Okay. So same process. All the six coverage types we have the process is same. Like we have to create provider first, coverage type, then create a plan, then event, then enrollment, then plan your definition. So my request is please uh, uh, identify or observe the process what are all group process and groupings we are doing later we, we have to discuss complex things okay so i'm going to create provider as usual first create benefit provider uh on one two zero two one so let's say company on its own they're maintaining the trust so we will call it as Company on the trust. Okay, and there, since company is owning their own trust, there's no URLs, etc. Please ignore. So the here we are just creating one value, sir. Later we will discuss electronic signature, plan availability, etc. Then the next task go to the maintain benefit coverage. Types under retirement savings expand the section under retirement savings scroll down similarly select the order button I'm going to specify the order as one itself name is let me call it as AMD 41k So would you like to allow beneficiary uh, designations, beneficiaries are required? In simple, this is a retirement savings account. If something happens to an employee, any risk happens to an employee, so who is going to get this benefit? For example, an employee called Mr. John has contributed around 20,000 US dollars for his 401k retirement savings. Later, some risk happened to him, he expired. Then who has to get this amount, whether dependents, are some beneficiary trustee so would you like to make it mandatory so which means whenever the employee opt in this plan the employee has to mandatory has to input dependent details or beneficial history beneficiary information okay optional means is the employee interest he can declare or he can he can ignore not applicable means you're not allowing employee to enroll in dependents enroll in the sense or uh, uh, the beneficial dependents etc okay so now now let's make it as mandatory we'll select required no uh, we'll select optional because we have to do some testing let's take it as optional icon is just to identify whenever the employee is uh, uh, selecting so just to identify the retirement savings so retirement is a citizen 
so which one we will select as a retirement So is the stock ahead. stock so this one no the uh, stocks bottom stocks. Uh, okay. yeah right there okay and why benefit I mean, yeah usually here they're tied to some kind of a mutual funds oh okay. and then now uh, this we already discussed let me explain again only one election if you create multiple benefit plans on this coverage type if you would like to choose only one election, then select this one. Since retirement savings always will create only one. Okay, only one. So there's no meaning of selecting this, so please ignore. Uh, this is a must act coverage. Is it mandatory? You have to uh, make it as mandatory for employees. I want to, yes. Okay, I will select yes. When you select must act coverage, you also have to select another, another field called auto and road at worker level. Okay. So please select master coverage. Would you like to display employee cost? Yes. Would you like to display employer employer contribution? Yes, I would like to. Or would you like to bring this plan effective from next year first onwards? Then select this one, which means in the current year, you are not allowing any employee to enroll into the plan. This plan will be effective from next year along with the open enrollment. If that is the case, select this one. In use, so far no plan has been created, so it is blank. Any questions on the screen, sir? No. Actually, I do. Uh, so on, the one that you did not check, one only one election. Can mm. you explain that one more time? No, definitely. For example, actually, this is quite common for health savings. Let me take you one example here. I mean, healthcare. Okay. So here, if you see healthcare all selected one, one, one. What we will do is, for example, you take medical, sir. Okay. Uh -huh. With the medical, I will create three plans medical executive, medical management, medical non management. Okay. Three plans I have created. When you create these three plans to different management levels, because I'm giving uh, what you call coverage, different, different amounts for different management levels. Yeah. I will create only one coverage type. Under this coverage type called medical, I'm going to create three benefit plans. Three benefit plans. Something like, uh, I want to write type it here, but one is executive. Oh, let me do this way. I will get one for executive. And this is for, I will create for same coverage type. With the help of this coverage type, I will create for management. And I will also create with the same on the same coverage type for non management. If you see one coverage type, I created three different plans executive, management, non management. So now, when I create three different coverage types, would you like to allow any employee to select two plans or one plan? I want to make it only one. Though I created three coverage types. I want all employees to choose only one plan, not three plans. So in that case, I will say only one election. Got it. That makes sense now. Thank you. No problem. So let me save this record. Provider we have, coverage type we have. Quickly, we'll create a benefit plan. And today we'll talk about worker plan eligibility also. So which date we will select? It's okay. We'll select this date, John 1st, 2022. Company on trust, plan type retirement. Then it will ask us 
coverage type here coverage type is ADM41K. I'm not giving the name because I want to display this name itself. Hence, I'm keeping it as black. And this one, I want to give some description like MD41K mandatory benefit plan for regular employees. And if you want to maintain some uh, URL, if this benefit plan is provided by some third party vendor, they will maintain uh, some uh, website and you can just copy paste the website details here so that the business users who server wants to, they can refer it. Okay. And if the uh, group policy is there, then we can give a, we can give the GPN number. It's just for references. So who is eligible or who is going to participate uh, as part of this benefit plan. So let's select USA regular employees. USA salaries. And the worker plan eligibility we will talk today. And I'm making the employee has to enroll. So enabling this checkbox. What does it mean? Auto enroll means you are forcing the not forcing. There are certain plans which employee has to choose mandatorily. They cannot skip the plan at all. For such plans, we can enable the checkbox auto enroll. So which means employee has to choose this plan. Okay. And then frequency, let's select as monthly. Earning and deductions in the last session we created, right, sir? The similar to that the payroll team will create. When they will create automatically, it will be available, it will be defaulted here or if payroll team already created earnings prior to you creating the benefit plans you have to group it here the earning will be available here so that you have to map it okay so let me repeat two options by the time when you're creating this benefit plan payroll team is already created deduction already created deduction directly map it here directly map it here if payroll team is not create any deduction and you are you are first configuring then later they will group it okay just work to give the flexibility if payroll team is in advance then then benefits configurations you can assign if benefits team is in advance then payroll ignore payroll team will assign later okay Contributions. So in some countries, the retirement savings is percentages. Some countries, the retirement savings is amount amount based. So what they give the flexibility here. Now let's go standard process. The minimum contribution is zero. The maximum contribution, if you want to give, you can give 16%. Okay. 16% of per annum. No, 16% of frequency per month. Whatever the employee salary is coming in. On top on that, we are calculating 16%. Okay. And then if it is an amount, assume this is not a percentage, if this is an amount, you can give minimum $10, maximum $100. You can give here, which means employee can contribute between these two values, not beyond this, not lesser than this, if it is amount based. And what is the employer contribution? Employee, okay, employee can contribute zero, and maximum the employee can contribute 16%. Fine. How about employer? If employer is not contributing, only employee, select none of the above. If employer contributing, then select this employer contribution percentage. And then uh, let's say employer also contributing around 6%. Employee maximum can contribute 16%. Employer at flat level is contributing 6% okay and right. can i ask you a question on this this is so what what about if the employer will contribute let's just say 50 percent of the you know they have maybe a percent of the funds yeah. then if you as an employee contribute max they'll do six percent but in order for you to get six percent uh employee has to contribute six percent so every um, dollar for dollar 
Uh, okay, okay. You're saying if employer contribute, employee contributing 16%, employer contribute, employee has to contribute 16%. That's what you're saying. Um, yeah, you can look at that way. Or max, the, the, the max that the employer can contribute is 6%, but employee has to contribute 6% to get that. Anything over 6%, so let's just say employee contributes 10%, uh, the max the employer will give is 6%. Okay, so yeah. normally, sir, you have the flexibility. You can override the values. What we will do is we will give the maximum number here. Okay, so the always this number will be lesser than this number, right? Mm -hmm. So that way we can work. But these retirement savings plans mostly it will be based on the country legal rules. So we are well aware what is the maximum limit. And payroll system has ability. So here I can give, for example. Here I can give, uh, let's say employer is six percent. And I'm, okay, let one second, sir. I will be, I will give an example. Let me do one thing. I will give a overview first because it's not controlled in our benefit plan. It is controlled in our payroll system. Uh. I will I will explain for now please hold the plan you can scroll down here we will maintain the limit sir what is the maximum limit what is the maximum limit we can maintain okay so this has to be maintained by work day if you if you go inside Whatever the percentages you are giving at plan level is not being considered only. It's just for calculation. How much employee at the end he has to contribute, work they will maintain here, annual limit. Ah, uh, okay. So it is not in our scope. Our scope is just to enter amounts or percentages. Payroll system has to stop if an employee already made this maximum contribution. Let's say um, a management level employee can contribute till this amount in an annum. A highly compensated employee can contribute first first five months itself, this month. Six months onwards, workday will stop deducting 401k for that employee. Why? Because he already met the upper limit. I see. Right, sir. Yeah. So percentage amounts at benefit plan level, just numbers. Payroll system has to take the call, sir, here. Okay. Thank you. No problem. So I will read the benefit plan which you are creating. So in this case, you can even, instead of 16%, you can put 100%, uh, but of course the payroll will determine what the limit is and stop the deduction. In this of case, course. Right? That yeah. works, okay. yeah. we, normally we'll give the zero to 100% full salary also you can contribute, okay. but that amount should not be greater than $22,000 into. Correct. Yeah. Thank you. Goodbye. So this is external payroll deduction, sir. This is in-house payroll deduction. What is the difference? If you have payroll within workday, we will get deduction here. You remember in last session we have configured. Yeah. yeah. If it is external means you are processing this deduction in ADP, here you have to map the deduction. Okay. So, so in this case, if you're using ADPs to process payroll, you need to map that over here yeah. with the uh, ADP yeah. payroll code and all that. Correct. Correct. Okay. okay, simple plan. Any questions on plan config, sir? No, thank you. Okay, let me save this record. Now, the next event is benefit event. We will get a new event called AMD Retirement Savings Account. What we are offering is retirement savings account. 
amd 41k worker selectable yes now here you see sir i'm not giving any date okay in last session i gave some field here enrollment effective date now remember i'm not giving any value so i would like to show what is the update default value and this plan is applicable only for country usa so i'm selecting restricting country usa so days to enroll on event date itself will give timeline of one month once the plan is initiated and again i'm saying the rest of things a lot many things we have to discuss on the screen basic things still i'm discussing okay okay yeah. saving this record now we'll do grouping enrollment event rules then only plan is available to assign so access the task read enrollment event rule So, okay. Now on the starter where we cover it, select the add row button. This is standard. Select your event, the one we configure retirement. Select the coverage type uh, AMD 41K. Would you like to allow the employee to wait to get this eligibility? If yes, you can give. And one thing we have to remember here strictly, when you mention waiting period, this is applicable only in open enrollment. It's not applicable if a benefit partner, for example, I gave 90 days of 90 days from the higher date. By default, it will pick up higher date. It, it means it does. I'm sorry. If you're going with open enrollment, then waiting period will work. Though I gave 90 days, a benefit partner initiating the plan, he can initiate the plan from the higher date itself. Okay. So during open enrollment, I will explain. For now, let's go zero. No waiting period. And then on event date, coverage I would like to start on event date. We have some drop downs. We'll talk since we second session only we are in basic. Coverage on event date means once the plan you assign to an employee, what are the effective date you will select from the effective date the plan is eligible. Coverage begin date, sorry, deduction when you want to start from employee's paycheck. Once the coverage will be begin. Okay. And then go to coverage rules. These two are important. This is for to allow to allow the employee to sorry to allow the employee Ben partner to choose the plan. This is for defaulting rules. So here, sorry, similarly same thing. Select event type. Select the coverage type. Benefit plan changes allowed. Can select any plan or current plan can select any plan so what are all dependent changes you want to allow healthcare we will select this is not for 401k only employee eligible default to current election priority coverage are waived so we have to walk through each and every example so that then i will discuss i'm selecting currently standard ones any questions on the screen for now remember start our wave coverage coverage rules only we have configured with basics Okay. No okay. question. No question. Okay, sir. Saving this. The next step is assign the plan under plan year definition. Then only it is available to assign and default. Access the task. Since we already created one benefit plan year task, access the task, edit. I'm not creating a new one. I'm just going with our existing one. Edit benefit plan year definition. Select the benefit plan year definition from here. IMD. Okay. I'm sorry, is someone has created a is is not is not ours. Oh, wrong task. So retirement savings, our plan should be available here. 
फोर वन के वन थिंग वी हैव टू रिमेम्बर हियर सर बे एनी चांस इफ यू नॉट एबल टू सी ए प्लान अंडर यूर प्लान या डेफिनेशन रीजन वन द प्लान माइट बी कॉन्फिगर विथ फ्यूचर डेटेड नॉट इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू इट हेज बीन कॉन्फिगर विथ टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री एफेक्ट टू डेट देन द प्लान वॉन्ट बी अवेलेबल हियर रीजन टू द प्लान माइट बी इनएक्टिवेटेड ओके इफ यू नॉट एबल टू सी ए प्लान हियर मीन्स एदर ऑफ द रीजन ओके ओके राइट now the plan we have group now it is available to our client so we'll go to one worker and we'll see how the plan works select worker reductions benefit changes change benefits change reason the event one we created retirement savings it will ask you know event date submit by election this is the one we are trying i said uh, a field what there is one field right you can overread the field whatever so some of the employees may not be aware what is event date instead of that i want to give a meaningful meaningful way some something like this uh, enroll uh, this is the date from when from your benefit plan is effective let me show one example remember it's benefit event okay so now what i will do can i no no question i will go back i will select this worker later we'll do testing edit benefit event so i'm going to override this benefit event date to something different uh now we cannot sorry no 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 it is there still i can override So I'm going to override to by default we pick a benefit event date. I'm going to override to effective date from the let me put this here. this is the date you are enrolling into the plan so instead of work date delivered value i am just overriding with our simple layman language so now when i select okay if i go to the same employees now see instead of benefit event we are able to see something different can you see now yes so it is now it's giving some proper meaning so the date sir first of february will select and if you see here when i said february first of february i am not able to see any plan which means either my configuration is incorrect or this employee is not eligible for the plan when you gave this effective date it should display what are the plan we have mapped here it is not displaying it is written zero now we have to troubleshoot why this is not coming in now let's see how to troubleshoot i have an employee what is his effective high date 2000 past date so he is eligible full time employee employee in new york usa is this employee salaried or not i could see he is a salaried employee he is eligible but why the plan is not available so further i want to test what i will do i'll go to the related actions go to benefits benefit election sorry benefit results view ben benefits eligibility 
he is not eligible for any plan. So here it will list out all the plans the employee is eligible. But I could see he is mapped under hourly. Our plan is salaried. Okay, so how come he is mapped here? Let's see our plan eligibility rule. Now let's troubleshoot. That's only salaried. Yeah, further we'll go. Uh, okay. Just a second. Okay. Now, Ascend organization, global modern service, which means the employee should be part of this organization and employee should be in active status. That is there, ISA. And hourly compensation plan worker is empty. So he should not be a hourly wage employee. So now let's see whether this employee is part of this organization or not, whom we are testing. Where I can see that information, I can go to job and then organizations, more organizations. He is part of that company. He met the requirement one. Second thing, he met the requirement two that is pay rate type. He's, his employee is active, he is not terminated. Everything matching. Third thing, the rule itself is incorrect, I believe, hourly. Let's see that. Um, yeah, again, let me plan. Instead of this, we'll make this, we'll change this to meaningful one. So actually hourly plan is not equal to true. That is not giving any uh, sense. So I have changed properly, if any. So what does it mean? Employee should be part of this company and employee should be country USA and employee pay rate type is salary. Okay. Mm -hmm. So further yeah. here also I will. Uh, primary home address, United States of America. And then primary home address should match active employee. He is active. Everything is I believe you no know, matching. We'll give it a try. His address also we will see to be in safer side. Hmm. Sorry, contact contact information. Primary home address should be USA. It doesn't have home address only. So let me give it a try. Okay, okay, okay. I said it's worker selectable. Change benefits. Reason AMD retirement. Effective rate, let's say some random. I can still not see the value. Let me try this way. 
I'll proxy his account. No, no, no. This primary address should be USA. That is not given here, sir. Let's update that information. Edit. Primary address is blank. So this is the reason he is not eligible for the plan. Sir, can please help me uh, New York pin code? Uh, let's do, oh, that's a good one. Uh, let me find it. Here, let me give it to you. Uh, give me. Uh, try uh, 1006. Zero 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 six. Thank you, sir. Hopefully, it won't trigger any approval. Blah, 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 blah. Ah. <laughs> okay, let's do this. Oh, it's actually completed. But how come it's successfully not required? Not required. Makes sense. Now we'll go and see if it should be updated or not. It's updated. It should work now. Mm -hmm. Okay, still it's not. Let me try this. Another check is I have selected. I will proxy his account. No proxy option. I think could it possibly be because the 401k is only uh, configured uh, to salaried employee? And Carolyn is listed as hourly, maybe? Oh, is it? Yeah, I think okay. I saw Carolyn is listed as hourly employee. Then that is incorrect. Where? If we go, I think, we, uh, where's the personal profile? Okay, not a problem. What we will do, alternatively, we can see here too. A summary, yeah. The job profile, if you go under job profile, so if they are not oh individual contributor <laughs> okay let's see the parent type too hmm no parent type it defense then how he will get eligibility yeah now let's edit this go to catch let's see i will assign parent type so the other one way is good to learn so you can see where and all Issues are coming in. So, paratype, paratype. USA. One, he doesn't have address in USA. That is failed. Second thing is. Paratype. So eligible rule we have, but worker level it doesn't have. So, let's check again. It will work hopefully. Hmm. Uh. <laughs> <clears throat> Let me try for someone else. Let's try for Logan. Uh, shows up for her. 
somewhere the eligibility rule is not matching that worker sir or else let me tell you why it is not coming for that worker mm. uh, let me select someone else who made the eligibility USA. And job profile period type is there. They are not made in period type. Okay. But we'll be what, able to what about uh, current job job exempt? Uh, job exempt. We since we are not assigned in our eligibility rule, this is not going to play a key role, sir. If we include, no, not, then uh -huh. yeah. So I got the issue. What is it is? Uh, but for confirmation, I need one person who okay. Let's do. One. Mm. John Davidson. We have to proxy into their account, then only we can see. But here, proxy is not enabled for them. Let's see, I can do three tasks. Or else, let me tell you, sir, why it is giving this way. I can, I will tell you. I will. And for the event, and Carolyn Johnston. Carolyn Johnston. So we have raw data in this standard, sir. We have to proxy his account, then only we are able to see. But proxy is not enabled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But plan, plan is eligible that we are able to see. Let's do one thing, sir. Could we Answer possibly the aim the uh, the reason why maybe that AMD 401k is not showing it? If I remember correctly, when you mm -hmm. created that plan, I think you did a January first, 2021. Uh, but the date which you are selecting after the January 1st, 2021, right? It should be available, sir. Date is not an issue. Oh, it's not an issue? Date is not an issue. Because of, if you said prior to the date, it won't be available. If you said after the configuration date, it should be available. It should be available. Okay. What I am not able to see here is I have selected worker selectable. Okay. To make it simple, now see it should work. I'll give the admin permissions. Now it should work. Somewhere it is eligible to use. maybe this employee not eligible, I think. Somewhere it's hitting, but it's better to troubleshoot so that you will get an idea how to proceed. For now, I will show how the plan works.
Uh, now I removed the worker selectable, right? <laughs> yeah, that's not going to show up here. <laughs> Just a second. Submit. Now plan is should be default, sir. It should not allow the employee to select. Okay, it should default. When I select manage, see only one is triggered. Working as expected. Manage. It see it's not allowing you to wave off. Why? Because we elected we selected auto enroll. Yeah. Automatic doesn't default. But if you see. This is defaulted. It is good, but it's not allowing the employee. Oh, maybe in the next page it will. Sorry. Yeah. Here you can update how much the employee wants to contribute. And here he has to add the beneficiary. Existing, I will take his dependents. How much they want to contribute? It is at more than one also, hundred percent, but not more, more than hundred percent. If I give one zero one also, Workday will throw error message. So if something happens to Logan McNeil, her dependent Megan McNeil should get hundred percent. Or if they have multiple employees, I mean multiple dependents, they can select this way. Fifty percent to Spouse fifty percent to child. This also works. Okay. Save the record and review sign on. Submit. Should like you can print out. We we'll go to. Logan's profile. Okay. Okay. 